Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so I'm super excited. We're about to head off with Josh from Essential Mountain Homestead. I have my little ear pluggies so that I can double up on ear protection. I have my glasses for eye protection. I have my hat for neck protection. I'm good to go and I'm super excited. Hey guys, we're on our way. Sawmill today. We're, um, sorry, I, the caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. I'm, I'm not moving very fast. I, uh, Are you safe to be he operating heavy I, equipment? I think, I'm, <laughs> I think I'm safe to be operating heavy equipment. Hey guys, so I wanted to share some thoughts and feelings being out here on Josh's homestead and we're putting together a ladder after yesterday having done sawmill first time blew my mind and now we're up here making a ladder. The weather is beautiful in a different way than it was yesterday. Yesterday we had nothing but blue skies. Today we have overcast and some wind and maybe some rain coming in. This is what's fun about being out in nature and even better to be out in nature and have projects so that you feel like it's useful time instead of just leisure time. This is the best of the best. I hope there will be a lot more of this on his channel, so make sure to go watch Essential Mountain Homestead. So we're gonna build some, some stairs, some really rough carpentry stairs for getting into the loft in the cabin. And we're gonna do them out of some of these timbers that we cut on the sawmill, and I think they're gonna, it's gonna make a beautiful set of stairs for the kids. Bear with me on the drawing here. So we'll put in these these steps. And I think we can knock it out really quick and simple. Slight angle here. First I just want to square up the bottom. Because the end of the board when we cut that tree, we the chainsaw didn't get it real straight. I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna hold this angle up one inch. One inch to nothing. So I'll go to nothing, one inch. And that'll be our angle as it sits on the floor. We've, that's not bad for a chainsaw. I mean, I could do a lot better with a skill saw or a beam saw. But we're not building a piano. You're gonna hear me say that quite a bit. Time is of the essence, so that'll be our angle and we'll follow that up. Seven by 11 is kind of a normal stair tread. And so if we stick to that, it should feel normal. It should be ergonomical, it should be comfortable. So seven, seven, and then we do seven here. Roughly two, two and an eighth. So, oh, so you have to account for the width of your tread yes. as well when you figure out your running your rise. Yes. I like to go back and double check my work. So I'm um, seven, seven. You'll, you'll match your inches, but not square to both sides of the board. Instead, you're doing square to the angle that you cut. Right, back. because I want, I know that this angle is the one that's going to sit on the floor, and the floor is level. Yes, and you might find that your sawmill hit a knot, and that there's, you, you, you just want to check. You don't assume that there's uniformity. You're just not going to get the uniformity that you get out of mass production at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can see we've got some checking in the end of the board where it's dried. Um, so I'm going to cut some of that out. I've got the saw going and some lights and you can see that even running the saw is dimming the lights and putting a load on this generator. I think it's a 5500 watt. So if you could get 7, 8, 10, uh, 10 thousand watts, uh, which would be you know twice the size of what I got out here, you would not be disappointed. Some of the drawbacks there is fuel consumption. This thing, 
I can let it run one tank, it'll run all night. So if I've hooked up the camper trailer or trying to keep a heater going all night or whatever it is that I'm running power to until we get the permanent power hooked up, this thing doesn't drink a lot of gas like a great big uh, generator would. So, so kind of decide what you're using it for. If you're going to run it on heavy load all the time, you want a big generator. If you're not going to, it's going to be hit and miss, maybe use it a little bit, then I'd find something smaller that's not going to drink quite so much gas. I just try to listen to the motor and I, I want to keep it ramped up so that it's not binding. You can kind of, if you just listen to the motor, You can, you can kind of hear it. I wish you guys could, could uh, smell how great it smells here. Cutting through that knot and some of that, that sap puts off a really nice smell. You can hear that that motor had to work a little bit to get through that knot, but uh, we got it cut and it looks great. I like to go, if you put the longer edge on the edge of the board, which gives you a larger average. Okay. And you don't have to do that side, you can do the inside. So I just like to hold it right there and I can adjust it if I need to. Okay. I, so is it tipping that way? And if it is, does it matter at this point? Uh, no, nope, that's gonna be just fine. Cause see that space is roughly the same. And you, okay. But, It kind of gives us a reveal, see? We thought that we, the board wasn't really as square as we thought it was. And, and it shows Because there. this is straight. So that was much better. So what was making it not do that before? Was it because this edge was pulling too far away? Well, or the board was Yeah, I kind of, I just had to pull it out. Okay. To kind of cheat it to the line. The other thing I noticed is you're putting your hand right in there. Too close? Too close. It's, it not, I mean, you're, you're fine with the garden. It wasn't like the saw blade was ever close to it. Okay. But it's kind of a bad habit to get into. You want to keep those hands. Bring right it back. A little more. Better right there. Okay, you're good to go. Good. Perfect. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come around here, I'm gonna line this up on the on that mark. And then I'll come around on the back side and make a pencil mark. And then I know that that space will fit this tread. And I'll do the same on the other side, where I line it up on the pencil mark and then mark it on the back. Tricky. So this is number number one. So now my thinking is is if I notch this out even a little bit, a quarter of an inch or whatever, then that corner of the wood is sitting in there and it's held up by wood. It's not just sitting on the nail or screw or bolt or whatever that we put through there. And I like the, the joints will look tighter instead of being out here. If it's tucked in, it'll hide that joint. It'll look, it'll look like a, a tighter finish. If you guys want to see the chisel video, make sure to go check it out on Josh's channel where he talks about how to get the most bang for your buck in these older tools that are not from China. We stopped the project at we halfway. We, and now we're back to finish this project up. And we stopped last time at having cut the treads and we had tried a little bit to get some of the material that was gonna be sunk and recessed. Is recessed, that the right word? Yeah. 
and try and get that out of the way, but it didn't work with the miter saw and we didn't have any other tools, which is why Josh likes to talk about his tool trailer a lot is because having all the tools in one place at the same time makes makes getting things done a lot lot easier so we're picking up from where we were before and i'm really excited about this phase um we now have a skill saw correct yes and that's the reason for this point in chisels chisels and a skill saw we'll cut these out and then we'll do the other side and then we can put our treads in and then get it all screwed together Okay. And then we'll set it up and take a look at it. One of the first things I want to do is check the depth on the saw. And there's there's guides along here, but I always feel more comfortable. So I've got it where I want it. And I'll make them all uniform along the whole line. What do you think? A little sawdust? A little sawdust. A little sawdust. Um, let's, let's grab the chisel okay. and I'll show you how to clean it out. Okay. And we'll go through the whole process on one and that may help us set us up for success on doing the rest of them. Sound good? First priority in a shop is a vacuum system. And for obvious reasons, when you're, when you're cutting, 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 you're making a ton of sawdust and being able to breathe and make it enjoyable in there, not having to work in a dust storm is really important. Um, so not a really super nice chisel, but we're gonna use it, we're gonna pound on it and it's not the sharpest chisel. So I'm gonna clean it up real quick. So if you'll notice on the, on the chisel, the chisel kind of has two angles. If we put the chisel like this, that's going to drive that blade down into the wood. Okay. We want it to, to plane across. So okay. we're going to turn it over and... And do it like that. And do it like that. Okay. But you, for different scenarios, different techniques, keep that in mind that, that you can drive the force of that blade in different directions depending on how you set that up. Tell me how that hammer feels. Heavy? Heavy. Uh, shake it a little bit. It's um, soft. It has a little give. It's not like a okay. metal. It's got rubber or something on it. It's got a short, and the short handle makes it so you can, you can kind of short stroke the hits. You don't have to swing back as far right. because you're just kind of tapping as you go along. So try the other hammer. Okay. I just want to see if you can kind of feel a difference. Oh. It's like my hand is actually absorbing the shock instead of the... The yeah, tool. Right. Yeah. 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 Now imagine, imagine you had to do this all day long. It makes my, it, it makes this hand hurt now, a little now, bit. Now try. Much gentler. <laughs> well, what I noticed is that you're, you're, you're making a lot more progress because of the weight of that, you're, it's driving driving that chisel a lot further with each each blow, and I, you know, people say, "Hey, I've got a hammer and a chisel, I'm good," but it's it's little things like like this. And what's it called? I I, I call it a chisel hammer. The other thing that we're learning here is where we our saw cuts were closer together, okay. it comes out a lot easier than in the areas where they're further apart. Okay. So as we go down the line cutting these out, we we'll want to be sure to get them as close together as possible to minimize the amount of work we have to do to... Okay. So see the, see the wood? See how we have the darkness of the wood? Mm -hmm. That's going to be harder. Okay. And the lighter is going to be softer. So you, you may notice that you're going along and then it, it slows. Yeah. yeah. Don't let it dive and, and gouge it. You know, you're just going to have to kind of readjust the angle of the chisel and and try to work across that and keeping it smooth. Okay. So I think the hardest thing is trying to keep the edge of the chisel from like digging down into the corners and instead hold it level 
I'm really struggling with that right now. It's making some pitting. But I guess Josh says if I don't make mistakes, then I don't get an education. So I'm getting very educated right now. See how awful it looks? Like some of this where it's really deep, it's because I, I like let it gouge in instead of keeping it straight and smooth. Um, there's definitely a learning curve. And I'm, <laughs> I'm sure the stairs will be super stable. I'll just be glad this part is covered up. <laughs> I really like cutting outside better. I am not swallowing as much sawdust and the temperature is a lot better. So my, I highly recommend, if you can be outside and doing this, it's way better than inside. Everybody is going to be able to see where those screws are on the outside. So I want them to be uniform so they look good. The other thing I really like about the chisel hammer is for pounding in this wood. If I was to use a metal hammer, it would mar things up, but, but using this, this mallet I can pound things around without marking stuff up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my secret weapon. This is a four inch angle grinder made by Makita. Now it doesn't have to be Makita, DeWalt makes good ones. Um, I don't have a sponsorship with anybody, but I have used Makita and DeWalt and they are both great tools. But what's unique about this is putting the four inch grinding pad on here. Now this is a 50 grit. And what this lets me do is where I may have crowns or knots or things that keep, that make it uneven, I can quickly sand those out of the board and get right back to putting things together. We're using three inch grabber screws and I really like these. You can get them in all sorts of different coatings for interior exterior use. They're relatively inexpensive and they're great fasteners. My only concern with them, sometimes you can, you can break the heads off. They're, they don't have great shaft strength. Um, but put in three or four and if you need to take it back apart later or make adjustments, change something, um, this is the three inch grabber screw is a great, great fastener. So a lot of time when we're putting together timber framing pieces, we'll use a lot of straps, uh, ratchet straps to pull things together. I think I can pull this together with the screws, but if not, I may have to grab a ratchet strap, wrap it around it, and try to suck it together tight to hold.
definitely faster and easier. See, I kind of like that, that tip to it, that it's canted a little bit. It's much better this way. I like that there's like this little platform at the top yeah. where you can turn around and get your feet onto the ladder instead of it being, I like that it's dropped like that instead of the first step being so close to the top of the, so actually I'm, I'm kind of tickled. No, don't hurt it. This stair project may not match your needs or be what you need at your house. But that's the beauty of having the tools and the timber is you can create whatever's going to be a good fit for you and your home and your family. Okay, so the next set of stairs are for Kim for their own house. And so, hopefully we can speed up the speed up the process uh, a little it'll be more faster, for their stairs. Because we, we actually need two sets because we've got two lofts. What I like about these is that it allows us to still utilize a lot of our space down here on the main floor because they are going to be pretty thin and mm -hmm. and easy for the, but still safe enough for all of us to climb up and safe for kids to go up and down. Um, it, the ones at your place though are they pretty? phenomenal. They're beautiful. This is, this is probably the best function for as many people as we're going to have in here though. So I'm super excited about these. We, that's, we had considered building a, a more, normal formal type of stairs to climb up into the loft but, but space is just at such a premium that that's just not going to be an option but i wanted something heavy duty enough that i could run up and down it no problem and so this is what we came up with yep. hey guys i wanted to show you the final results and the reason we needed it to be a ladder and not a staircase was because we already have our big beautiful staircase over here that has storage in it we needed something that was almost completely up and down we wanted it canted a little bit but um, to all intents and purposes, we just wanted a ladder. And one of the things that we noticed after we built it was that your foot doesn't have to go all the way back, and so why not use the back for some storage? That was Kim, Josh's wife, that thought of that. And I think it is absolutely brilliant. It is just the right height for cans. And we had intended this one to be for the girls. I'm not sure if we'll go for that at this point because um, it is a little bit steep and even though I find it easy to get up and down, I worry about the girls at night in a ladder like this. And so we may have them over in that loft and John and I may take this loft. This loft is a little bit shorter, but, uh, we're, but the whole reason we're making everything movable is because, again, you really need to play with your space before you build anything in. So I am super, super excited with how things are fitting together. Thanks Josh and Kim from Essential Mountain Homestead and we look forward to doing many more projects with you. Everybody else, please go check out Josh and Kim and they will be putting up more vlog style videos because they are working very hard to get their homestead up and I have the link in the description below and also in the cards and we'll talk to you later. Hello young lady. Hi, we don't need you. <laughs> we don't need you. Unnecessary. Hey, 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 hey let me see. If, if you get to the side, it's a more natural movement and then trying to push it right in front of you. Wow, you didn't tell me how glamorous I looked. If I cut my finger off, I'll come tell you. That's such a good idea. Yeah, I thought it was.